If you ever want to build automations or workflows into your Framer projects using a tool like Zapier, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do exactly that. We're going to connect the Framer CMS and Zapier together so we can create brand new use cases with zero code. Let's go. So the first thing you need to understand is the framework we're actually going to use to connect Zapier to Framer. Now, while there is no direct Zapier integration, this solution that I'm offering here today will hopefully solve 99.9% .9 of your use cases. If not, let me know what you're trying to do in the comments and I'll try my best to help. So the first step is to collect our data, whether that be from form submissions or a database or something else. Next, we're gonna send that content to a database, which we're going to sync to the Framer CMS. And then once it's inside the CMS, we can visualize that data on any page. So let's actually start in Framer by creating a new form here to collect that data. So we'll open up the Framer Forms plugin and we'll just create a new form in here. Okay, let's keep this really simple. So we'll have a name field. We'll also have an email field. I want a field in here, which is title. And last one's going to be for a color option. Now, I just wanna set some settings on my input here. So for name, it's gonna be name. For email, it's going to be email. For title, we need to update that. And for color options, we'll call this color. And we'll set some options here. So let's have red, blue, and green. Okay, and let's actually drag this onto our page here and make sure it's set to the center. So we'll just turn the layout on. Okay, cool. Now we actually need to send this data somewhere on submission. So by default, I can send it to an email, a webhook or Google Sheets. Now, if we wanna automate this through Zapier, I can just send this to a webhook. So I'm gonna click on webhook here and this is where we can put a URL. Now to get that, we need to go to Zapier. So here we are inside of Zapier and let's create a new Zap. And let's just call this my Framer workflow. Now we're going to set the trigger to be when that form gets submitted. So we're going to go into here and we're actually going to search for webhook. And we'll select that here. And we're going to make it that it's going to catch that hook. Essentially what that means is when somebody submits that form, it's gonna listen out for that and capture that data and send it directly here. So let's just continue. And you'll notice it'll give us a webhook URL. So we're going to copy that and we're going to go back to Framer and we're going to paste that in just here. So let's publish our website and actually test this. So I can just preview this. I'm gonna say my name is Ryan Hayward, my email, my title, and we're gonna select a color option of blue and we're going to submit our form. So now if I go back to Zapier and test that, you will notice it's now found a record with all of my form information. So now we can just continue with this selected record now, this is the trick where we essentially want to store that data somewhere. Now, if we go back to Framer for just a second and open the CMS, you'll notice we've actually got no content here. Now, if I open plugins, which is what we're going to use to sync that content, you'll notice there's a bunch of CMS plugins that we can use to actually sync our content from an external database into Framer. And this is essentially how we're making that connection. Now, my recommendations here are these top three, Airtable, Notion, and Google Sheets. All three work perfectly fine. You could argue that Airtable is a little bit for more advanced use cases, where Notion and Google Sheets will probably just do you just fine. In this instance, we'll just use Google Sheets as probably most people will be aware of how to use that. And we'll create a new collection here, which we'll just call our Google Sheets. Now, all you need to do is follow this setup process to sync your Google Sheets to Framer. Now we'll come back to this in just a minute, but let's head back to Zapier. So now that I've decided that I'm going to use Google Sheets, I'm going to select Google Sheets. And essentially what I want it to do when the form gets submitted is to add a new row to my sheet. So we're going to look for the option here to create a spreadsheet row. And we're just going to select the account that I'm using. And then I can select my spreadsheet. 
which is my frame at database. Now, if you're wondering what that looks like right now, it's empty and all I've got is the field names that are exactly the same as my form submission. And we'll just select the worksheet to be the names. So now you notice I've got the option to tie my data to my name, my email, my title, and my color column. So if I click on this little plus, you'll notice it's showing me all the data here from my form. And I just have to sync that up with that column. So my name's going to be my name, my email is going to be email, title, and then lastly, color. So let's continue and test this. We'll just go test that step. Okay, it looks like it works. Let's publish this. And now let's go to our Google Sheets and you can see that our data is loading correctly in here. So now let's take it across to Framer. So I'm gonna go back into Framer, go to plugins and open the Google Sheets plugin. Again, you can use Airtable or Notion and we'll just call this my Framer database. Now I just need to follow the setup instructions here. So we'll paste in my URL and select the sheet. Go next. And we're just gonna make sure that all these are tied correctly. So all these are just going to be a string, which is just name. But for this color one here, it's actually an option. And in this case, since there's no numbers or images or links or anything like that, that I need to include inside my database, I am just going to leave all of these as string, which is essentially just your normal input. And I'm gonna click on import. And you will notice that my content is now here in the CMS. So now if I go back to my canvas here and let's create a new page here, and let's call this my database. And I'm going to go up to the insert menu, go down to collections, and I'm going to drag in our Framer database. And you'll notice it's already started to load some of my content. Now inside this collection list here, I can just style or make this look however I want. So let's just do some real basic styling here. Let's add say a little bit of padding. Let's add a background color with a bit of a shadow. Okay, so you've noticed I've built a little card here. It's very basic, it really doesn't do much. And then all I'm gonna do is tie some of my content here. So on my title, we're just gonna select the little plus and we'll set that variable to be the title. And we'll do the same for the email here. Now, since we made it that we want someone to select a color, we can actually set certain properties to style depending on that option. So to do this, I'm gonna go down to fill. We're gonna set the variable to be our color and we're going to go convert. Essentially what we wanna do is make it that when our field is labeled red for color, it turns red. When it's labeled blue, it turns blue. And when it's green, it turns green. So we'll just make it when it converts, when red, we're going to make it set to a red and we'll just set the fallback to be black. When blue, it's going to go to a blue. And then lastly, when it's green, it's going to go to a green. And you can already see that this has started to take effect. So now that we've successfully synced our data to the CMS and it's all loading correctly, let's actually check out this whole workflow. So let's go back to our homepage here and submit our form once again. So let's call this John Doe. It's going to be John at Framer.com. His title is going to be Framer Expert and his color is going to be green. And since my Zapier is already working, you can see that it's automatically loaded into my database inside of Google Sheets. Now, the one thing that really, really sucks about Framer that I wish the Framer team would allow, but unfortunately they don't right now, is auto syncing. So anytime there's an update and you wanna show that inside your CMS, you actually have to go to the Framer CMS and manually click on sync. Yes, I know, I wish there was a better way of doing this, but this is all we've got for the moment. But you'll notice it actually loads in correctly. And now if I go back here, go to my database, you'll notice we've got a new entry here for John Doe, the Framer expert with the color green. And that's how you can connect Zapier and Framer together. There are a ton of different use cases why you actually might want to use Zapier and the Framer CMS together. 
Whether you want to build a directory where someone can submit to your website and then instead of manually uploading that content to the CMS, you can just make it automated. Or maybe you actually want to build a private CMS view just for clients or yourself so you don't even need to touch the frame of CMS. Or even if you want to capture leads from your frame of forms and you want to send that data elsewhere, whether back to the CMS or not, you can just use a form in Framer send it to a webhook inside a Zapier and then connect that to any one of your apps. I hope you found this video useful. If you want more Framer tutorials like this, consider subscribing to the channel because in 2025, we're putting out a huge amount of new content. And if you want to power up your Framer site even more, head to insertframe.io because we actually create a ton of different plugins that close the gap on any of your Framer problems. But until next time, I'll catch you later.